Mm, okay, hello everyone. So this is some kind of, of test of new hardware, and, and basically I'm, I'm trying to to test how how things work. And what what happened to me is that I recently bought new new laptop, and this this laptop is tablet, so I can use it to to write things on the screen of my of my computer. Has with, with stills, and for some time I was I was thinking that mm, I should I should make some kind of, of blog which would mm, which would describe nice nice things about mathematics. Like when I learn something new interesting, I can I can put it there. But the main problem was that uh, it it requires a lot of a lot of work to to write things down in in a nice way. And this is this this makes everything much simpler. That I can just grab my pen and, and write something on the screen. So so today I would have considered this just just like a test video for for YouTube and things like this. But also maybe you can you can learn something interesting. So so today's topic is is why is um, combinatorics beautiful and. And this is this is not, not just uh, thing concerning combinatorics. This is also also a thing concerning mathematics in general. And uh, what what is beautiful that that in mathematics you can you can see the same thing from several different angles, and always it will be something different. So it will it will like make make your more experience, more your understanding of of the thing more and more interesting. Uh, so. So I would like to to present one one really really simple simple uh, example like this. So so what what is nice that you can have different looks, and it will give us deeper understanding. Um, why combinatorics? Uh, combinatorics. The, the the main reason. The main reason is that it's it's some kind of of my main field. So so I understand it the best. So let me consider one one classical classical uh, theorem about about natural numbers. So so let me consider sum of of numbers one one to n. Hey, it's it's quite easy to to sum this this together. For example, what what we can do is is to write these numbers um, twice and once once in the in the opposite opposite order. Now we can we can sum these things together, and because like uh, we consider these these pairs of numbers, they will always sum to to n plus one. So we have n n pairs of size n plus 1 means the total sum of these two rows is n times n plus 1 but because we wrote the original sequence twice and originally it was there only once we have to to divide this this quantity uh, by, by 2 yeah, so so this is, this is some kind of, of very simple simple uh, result it was it was already proved by by Euler a long time ago and this was some kind of some kind of basic result. So if we add uh, numbers as, as arithmetic sequence, what we can do, and also add odd numbers, so one plus three plus five to one to to uh, to some some number, two n minus one. Yeah, so we have n odd numbers. And the, the question we should ask: what, what is the what is the sum here? So we could we could use a similar similar method as, as before, and we obtain we obtain a result that this thing is is equal n squared. And so so let me let me check it. So one is equal one squared. One plus three is equal four, which is two squared. One plus three plus five is equal 8 which is uh, which is uh, no, no no it's equal it's equal ah sorry uh, it's equal 9 which is which is 3 squared and, and so on and so we can we could use some kind of a formula for 
for some of, of this arithmetic sequence or we, what we can do is, is kind of, of, of standard standard way how to how to prove this thing using mathematic induction so the first step of induction is already already checked here yeah, we know that uh, that for for one one the equality holds and now what we need to do we need to check that if the equality holds for n it also holds for n plus one yeah, so we take uh, sum of first n n uh, odd numbers plus the n plus one odd number yeah, using induction hypothesis now we can we know that that sum sum of this is is n squared so what we have here is, is n squared plus 2n plus 1 which is which is known known formula for n plus 1 squared now so so the the first step holds and and the induction step holds so, so the theorem is correct and uh, we have quite quite simple proof uh, and also we could we could use a uh, general formula for some of arithmetic sequence but let me show you different idea how to how to prove these things just using using pictures and it's quite simple and this is this is the the thing i really like about about combinatorics that you can have different ways how to how to show things how to how to do things so so let me consider number n square and so what we can do we can represent this number by by a rectangle rectangle or grid of size n times n so so let me do it for n equal equal 5 yeah so we have we have n squared fields fields here and now now let me let me uh, split these these fields to two parts so first we have one 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 field in the in the uh, bottom bottom right corner now we consider neighboring fields to it these these three fields now we can consider these five fields and so on so we are going to to, to split the fields into into some kind of, of layers layers like like this now and now the key observation is what what is the size of these layers so so this layer has size 1 this layer has size 3 this layer has size 5 this layer has size 7 and the last one has size 9 and yeah, so you can you can see that that we we split the the uh, all n square fields to to layers which we have n layers of sizes 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 which is in our case equal n squared 5 squared so 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 in general we can we can do splitting like this and the important thing is that that each layer obtains two two more rectangles uh, two more fields than, than the previous layer yeah, because because of the difference between two neighboring layers are just the one one field completely on the right and one one field completely on the on the bottom so so the the, the size of, of these these layers are increasing by two and they, they will uh, like every every field of of this uh, of this uh, n squared size uh, grid will be will be contained exactly one layer yeah? so so this is this is some kind of, of nice example of a technique called double counting uh, double counting principle uh, so so basically we are calculating one one quantity and we are doing it in two different ways and uh, the important thing is that, th that the obtained result is always always the same 
So if we are calculating number of squares in this in this grid, we can either take it as n times n and we obtain n n squared, or we can split the the grid to to these layers and we obtain some sum of of odd numbers and and first odd numbers. And the important result is the the number the count is the the same. Yeah, so always we obtain the same result as before. Yeah, so so double counting principle is is a method which um, like the origin of, of this method is is in in accounts. Basically, when you when you have a, a table table of, of uh, numbers like this, and you want to to sum them, what what you can do is to is to sum them first some rows together, and you will obtain some some results, and then then you can sum these these um, sorry sorry uh, sum the columns and then you sum the sum the sums of, of the columns and you will obtain the total so the sum inside inside the inside of table or you can do it in in opposite way that you can first sum rows like this and then sum these sums together in in a different way and will obtain another another total sum and if your uh, calculation is correct you will obtain the same result in in the both ways so this, uh, this was some kind of, of 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 checking checking method whether your results are correct or not yeah? and so um this this method method looks very very simple and nothing nothing so so clever about it but but it it is really strong because it, it allows you to to prove um quite nicely uh, non trivial things so, so this is some kind of of general general approach to, to calculate things in in different way yeah so so let me show you some some better example of this so let me let me consider sum of arithmetic sequence squared like like this and the claim is that it is the same as, as num as sum of, of cubics now like this so so this is this is uh, some kind of, of theorem we would like to we would like to prove so what we can do here is to is to prove it by, by mathematical in induction exactly as before because we already have the statement so it's it's quite simple simple to prove it yeah so the proof proof could be could be something like this so so suppose yeah, we can easily check that that one squared is equal one cubic oh, so it's correct and now suppose that that this holds for n and we would like to prove it for n plus one yeah so so what we what we have here is one plus two n plus n plus one squared. And now what we are going to do we are going to to split this this sum to two parts and uh, like uh, square it uh, like like calculate calculate the uh, calculate the square of it. And so, so what we know, we, we know that this this thing is a plus b, and the whole thing squared is a squared plus two ab plus b squared. Uh, so if I write it down in this in this specific for the specific um, specific uh, uh, values, I will obtain one plus two n squared plus two times one to n times n plus one uh, plus n plus one squared, and I have a I have a rewrite rewrite this this sum to the to the other page. Uh, so so what what I or, or can I can maybe use this? Yes, yeah, yeah. So so I have I have this this sum here and. Um, so the the first part using using induction hypothesis, this is this is nothing else than uh, sum of, of a few few cubics like this. 